We just about that life today, baby. I'm gonna give y'all a quick 25. Quick 25, real quick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 24, 25. Ooh. Ooh, yeah, baby. Yeah. What's going on, y'all? It's your boy with another video. Man, oh, man. Understand this spiritual battle that we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis is a real thing. I don't, give a, I don't care what you believe in. When you're, when you're full of light within... You will repel darkness. Now, when you have light within an area of your life, you will repel darkness. Now, what does that mean? This is how you get your haters. This is how you get people to dislike you. Even close relatives, they will start to dislike you because sometimes something inside of you is showing light that repels them. It repels them and we're all on our own level, right? Some people deal with stress by drinking too much coffee. I'm probably one of those people. Some people deal with stress by smoking all day. Some people deal with stress by drinking all day, right? And those things are, are accepted by society as norms. Oh, that's okay, you can do that. It's stress, you know what I mean? Smoke a cigarette, you're good. Smoke some weed, you're good. But when you start working out and you start looking like you're weird, like you start doing burpees in the middle of the floor like I did over there just now for like a minute and 30 seconds. Or you start doing push-ups. People look at you like this motherfucker is cut from a different motherfucking cloth. When you start speaking your mind and people start hearing things that they're not used to hearing. And you're saying it with confidence and love. You're going to repel darkness. You're going to attract. You're going to attract. You have to surround yourself with that similar light, that similar energy. If you survive, if you're that light and you surround yourself with darkness on a constant basis, you surround yourself with negativity, that negativity, that darkness, the coldness of them will drown out your light and your warmth. And it'll make you cold just like them. And if somebody's stronger in their negativity than you are in your positivity, that person's gonna win the victory. Because that person's conditioned and has endurance in their bullshit, in their negativity, in their stinking thinking, right? Because they planted too many seeds of negativity. So they're already ahead of you in the game. See what I'm saying? So you gotta consistently work in your, you gotta continually, continuously work on your subconscious mind on a conscious level. Meaning, if you're if you're sitting there going to work and you're just listening to the radio all day and you talk, you hear all you hear is about money, cocaine, sex, and all. The, it, that's going into your subconscious mind, whether you like it or not, whether you believe it that it exists or it doesn't exist. That's just getting sunk down into your subconscious mind, some way, shape, or form. Right, and you're planting seeds. Listen to this. So, real quick, let me just read this for you. Proverbs twenty three seven, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. He says to you, eat and drink, but his heart is not with you. All right, what that means is, right, as you think in your heart, as you think in your subconscious mind, you're programming what you've been brought up with all your life, right? Whether it be negative or positive. You are running and functioning, 95% of your life is functioning off what you've been programmed to think whether you like it or not 5% comes from the conscious mind what you put your attention to right we have this mechanism in the back of all our brains right it's called the RAS the reticulary activating system you go go ahead and look this up you used to probably play a game called punch buggy no punch back and then all of a sudden when you mentioned you were in that game you see nothing but punch buggies, right? It's because you set your reticulary activating system to that thing. Now, most people that become religious, 
quote unquote, or start going to church every Sunday, but they don't, you know, they don't have the word in them and they, they judge you for what, you know what I mean? And you can still see that darkness in them that you still see that if it's a girl, you still see that hoe in them. If you see that dude, you see, still see the hoe in him or, or the thug in him. That's because their heart, just because you, you've made a commitment to renew your mind and to rebirth yourself, right? In a sense, spiritually, doesn't mean you're the cream of the crop. You'll never be the cream of the crop, but you're always striving to be the cream of the crop. And if that person's only striving, what, one day out of the week? That's only 10%. How are you going to succumb 10% of 10 years of programming? Just because you're re renewed in spirit, re rebirth, so-called, how the Bible puts it. You know what I mean? You could. It doesn't mean your life changes from one night to the other. That means that you're coming into a conscious, conscious understanding that I got to make some changes and I'm making a, a conscious decision to be mindful of what I put in my mouth, be mindful of what I put into my mind, my ears, my eyes on a daily basis, right? And it doesn't say stop surrounding yourself around the people that are our thing. Know yourself, know what tempts you, know what makes you weak so you won't have to go back, backtrack to where you were in square root um, back in the day, you know what I mean? What you were trying to get away from. Because this is what happens, right? Proverbs 23, 8 says, You will vomit up a little. You will eat in and will have wasted your compliment. Meaning, you could have went to the gym, right? And felt motivated, right? Felt motivated as hell. You're like, I'm going to be on my new diet. I'm about to get jacked. I'm about to get shredded. I'm about to get, if you're a female, I'm about to get this big booty. I'm about to have the body I never had before, right? That's the food. Right, you're putting food into your system, but then you go chill with your your programming. You chill with so-called how the how the Bible interprets it as dark spirits. It starts to dim out your light because they'll bring that Chinese food right to you. If you struggle with drugs, the weed will come, or the coke, or the drink, or the whatever it may. Whatever's your temptation, because each and one of us has our own programming. Whether it's food, food is a drug, man. And you could tell when somebody's intoxicated because the gluttony shows on your body. If you drink too much, you might get the shakes. If you eat too much, you'll get fat. Right? I'm telling you. I'm not telling this to judge anybody. I'm telling you when you start striving for your light and you try to beat your programming, you have to condition your heart 10,000 times on a daily basis You have to do it on a conscious level If you're not learning in the car You're not using your If you have an hour drive, right? They've they proven this in statistics Go ahead and look it up If you put a positive audio If you're in sales And you're listening to positive audio on the way to work Instead of the podcast from last night's game in four years, three years, you will have a qu equivalent of a bachelor's degree of that program an hour a day. If you listen to an hour a day on the way your commute to work, right? Because it's changing, you're consciously changing the program on your subconscious mind or how the Bible likes to put it, on your heart's mind to change. And each time you surround yourself, this is a proven statistic as well. You chill with more fat people, you'll eventually become fat. And especially if you have a history, a generational thing of becoming fat. Why do you think the doctor says, does anybody in your, like, if they, if you're going for your physical, does anybody in your family have diabetes? They're like, well, yeah, my cousin, my aunt has diabetes, my mom has diabetes. Does anybody in your family got cancer? That because if your body's out of balance, that means you have the same DNA and the same genetic code, the same programming as them. So you're more prone to get in those diagnoses. Right? If you're a junkie and your father was a junkie and your mom was a junkie, or if you were abusive, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying all these things that come to you. I'm just saying it's in your gene. And what you practice and what was programmed into your heart, you're more prone to manifest. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, be the light. Know yourself. Grow each day. Take don't take if you if you know yourself, you know you're weak around Twinkies, get your ass away from Twinkies. You're not ready to handle that battle right now. 
You know, maybe a year from now when you already got a few months in, you just start looking at it, you start researching that, damn, Twinkies don't even burn. All right? You start looking at the Dorito chips and then you start finding out what chemicals are two years from later. You find out that they have bat feces in and, and Doritos. And you're like, what the fuck was I putting in my body? You know what I'm saying? But anyways, I'm not telling you to separate yourself. Know yourself, know your strengths, know your weaknesses. I know my, my weaknesses is smoking weed. I know my weaknesses is drinking. It starts with drinking. And then somebody pisses, somebody pisses me off. I have a sip. Then I have a sip, I start feeling nice, and then I want to go smoke. And then, right as I smoke, I'm like, damn, I fucked up eight months of work. I have to start over route one, square one. That's my weakness. You know what I mean? Back in the day, like, I would say, like, four years ago, my weakness was pornography. You know, I, I see something, or I, I'm looking at something I'm not supposed to be looking at, and then I hear, I'm, you know what I'm saying? But we all deal with our own fucking struggles. The, the, the reason I voice out my struggles is because the more you voice out your struggle and the more you don't let it linger inside of you, the more you got control of it. But the more you can't talk about it, the more it has control over you. But anyways, find your tribe, find your vibe, and let's grind, baby. Peace.